Fox hunting is a countryside tradition. But the thrill of the chase is a blood sport. At the end of the day, it means a kill. And that's leading to war between the hunters and those passionately committed to killing off the sport for good. And now, new private armies have been hired to protect the hunters and gather intelligence on those sabotaging the hunts. At the same time, a few masked extremists have widened the war over what they regard as animal abuse and brought it into the city. Some people are going to extreme lengths to fight for what they believe are the rights of animals. Every weekend, two sides confront each other in the countryside over fox hunting. We investigated the mounting toll of violence and the latest tactics used by both sides. Adele Chrisman from Redbridge and Linda Embleton from Guildford don't look like frontline radicals, but they're dedicated members of the Hunt Saboteurs Association. At weekends, they shout and scream to throw the hounds off the fox's scent. They came to our office to tell us of a disturbing new development in what they said was a barbaric sport. And there is no place in any civilised society for something as brutal and as, uh, as callous and as bloody as killing for sport. You for fun. Are you willing to be arrested for it? Absolutely. Linda, what exactly did you want to tell us about hunting? Well, every, every aspect of hunting. But firstly, I would like you to investigate, if you will, the hunt's latest tactics of using security men to keep us off private land. Linda, aren't you concerned about your own safety? Most definitely. Yes, These absolutely. are hired thugs, mm. and they won't stop just because I'm 47 or a grandmother or whatever. I'm a saboteur. Both are part of an urban army which sallies forth from London to do battle. Adele and I join the Brixton mob, the shock troops of the Hunt Saboteur movement. Their vehicles, their clothes, had almost a military image. You've got a very kind of um, distinct image. An obvious image only comes about because of need, and we, we need to dress in a certain way for functioning the way we do. We run over large fields, uh, we jump over fences. Yes, yes, How yes, do you I'm... feel about going out with them? Um, you know, oh, it's great. They're nice kids. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah, lovely. Soon it was time to saddle up for the hunt. The Brixton mob climbed into their battle wagons and battened down the hatches. Adele and I got into our van and the convoy moved out of Brixton's side streets. A fox hunt was about to get some very unwelcome visitors. We motored out of the city and headed south through Surrey and into North Sussex, fox hunting country. As we neared the hunting fields, the police quickly picked us up and tailed the saboteur's convoy. I, meanwhile, had my hunt supporter's hat on to investigate who exactly were the men guarding the hunt. Uh, Roger, uh, brown shirt's down here, just down the road, five minutes away from you. All right. I came across them almost immediately. They were blocking an entrance to Petworth Park, a National Trust property, and filming everything that moved to build up information on the hunt saboteurs. Soon our quarry came trotting down the road, the Chiddingfold, Leckenfield and Cowdery hunt. The saboteurs had to run miles to keep up. So did I. It felt like a marathon. Keeping up with the saboteurs every step of the way were the grim-faced guards, who then shut the park gate on us, even though it was a public footpath and we had right of way. When challenged, they had to let us through. They had no authority to stop us. They'd already let me in because I looked like a hunt supporter. I used a secret camera behind their lines and discovered this hired van. I helped it out of the mud and found it had brought security guards from as far away as Nottinghamshire for the day. People were rushing about in all directions. I'd run out of breath and got separated from Adele, our granny saboteur. The guards, however, were equipped with two-way radios. The guards cost £85 a day, and some have military backgrounds. They were used to dealing with trouble and reacting quickly. Offensive weapon? Well over a hundred saboteurs from all over the southeast were still trying to disrupt the hunt. Despite heavy security, they were succeeding. Yeah, about 100 odd saboteurs somewhere down in there, and I've got about another 30 over there. Fearing violence, the hunt organisers decided it was best to call it a day. Yeah, You're not going to get sorted out, are you? You're not going to have fisticuffs and things like We're that. We're going home. 
But the saboteurs' convoy didn't go home because they didn't believe the hunt was being abandoned. We're, gonna, we're following the Brixton lot because we're going to go to the kennel to see whether the kennel is there. But we still haven't located Adele. The hardcore sabs were gathering at the kennels to see if the hounds were back. And that's where I finally met up with Adele again. Where do you two say we've been looking everywhere oh, for God, you? We've been looking for you. What happened was we got cut off because I'm a little bit slower. And we actually stumbled on the hunt and the supporters and we have been knocked and pushed and shoved and screamed at everywhere. Then the violence started. Some saboteurs threw bricks and stones over the kennel walls. They were promptly tossed back by the other side. <laughs> what I wanted to know is what the purpose of this is now. Well, the huntsman is a real die-hard sort of hunt type person and he hunts right till it gets dark normally, so I can't believe, and the police haven't actually confirmed it to us, that they've actually packed up now. So we're trying to get a look and see if the hounds are in the kennels. A masked sab was trying to peer over the wall. He was hit hard by someone on the other side, only feet away from the police. The man was taken to hospital with suspected concussion. The hunt organisers stayed protected behind police lines whilst urging them to act against the saboteurs. The kennel yard had been pelted with missiles and vehicles inside were damaged. The hunt was angry they'd been subjected to what they saw as intimidation. So angry they let us in to see for ourselves. The hunt insisted it was only the saboteurs who were breaking the law. But we discovered later that Jeremy Whaley, the hunt master, doesn't have lily white hands either. Why don't you just speak to us on camera? Because I don't think, I don't think you need it. The police that day were caught in the middle, their powers limited because trespassing on private land is not a criminal offence. So the police are loath to go onto private property to deal with sabotage unless they feel there's a real chance that there is likely to be a breach of the peace. So what we've done is to train up some stewards or marshals. The red-coated fox hunter now needs a bodyguard to go about his day's sport. It can lead to a riot, like the one we filmed a few weeks ago in Essex. Stewards were there, and so were the police. Fighting broke out. 26 people were arrested and six injured. Increasingly, the police are being drawn into advising hunts who decide to hire guards. I discussed this with the assistant chief constable, and he said, well, um, if, you, if you decide to do that, we will cooperate with you and we'll actually give your uh, stewards instructions. Training. And training, and some training, yes. What sort of training? And, uh, and he would do it free of charge. And so the stewards met an inspector one evening and he went through the law with them. The law can be applied in rather a rough and ready fashion by the Essex hunt, though sometimes even they slip up. These camouflage stewards, who had battled with saboteurs the week before, can only use minimum force to evict people from the land. Do it, man. Tell me why. The saboteurs tried to walk down a footpath to pursue the hunt and had their way firmly blocked by the stewards. The police backed them up. It's all been explained to, from the foot, to the men before a public footpath to walk down and to cross to other land. We're not, off. you're yeah. not. You're, gonna, you're going down One there for another purpose. No, let's do it. Come on. Yeah. Come on, let's do it. Stop them. No. You take, oh, you you take us to court and you prove. But you're not having right now. Listen, I'm home. telling you, any more and you are all going to be arrested. I'm not having it. Come on, off yeah, or you're going to be arrested. That's the situation. You know the law. I've explained it well, at length this law. morning. There's nothing to stop right? somebody walking down a public footpath. Yes, there is. How do you know what we... We're going to walk down there. I'm not going to bandy words to you. If there's any more of this now, you are going to be arrested. The violence is getting worse. There have been hundreds of arrests, dozens of injuries, and one death two years ago. Often, it ends up in the courts. Solicitor John McKenzie has had much experience uh, acting for hunt saboteurs who've been assaulted and falsely arrested. I've heard a number of uh, accounts of stewards attempting to throw saboteurs off land uh, and the stewards didn't even know whose land it was. They had no idea where they were. Uh, they were simply chancing their arm and, and trying to brave it out. Are their actions legal in that case? No, they're not, no. Uh, I've heard an incident described to me where stewards 
use violence on saboteurs to remove them from some land, and the landowner appeared and threw the stewards off. So they were simply um, being gratuitously violent. Hey, gents and ladies. An early morning briefing at the Surrey Hunt, where complicated legal issues of trespass and breach of the peace are explained to people who've had little experience of them before. So I've agreed that if you're all presented to me with yellow armbands, the fact these stewards now wear yellow armbands gives them legal authority. Stiffened, perhaps, with a little refreshment. These men are the professionals. They belong to a security company called Country Watch. These lads have been hired for the day by the hunt. We want a peaceful day. Everybody's ready to go after a traditional something to keep the chill out. But the protection's coming from places where fox hunting isn't exactly a regular pastime. You all live here, so this is your... This no, is your... I'm, from, I'm from Islington. You're from Islington? <laughs> yeah. You're not me. <laughs> They're the amateurs. David Dunn, boss of Country Watch, isn't. Okay, they're coming through this wood here. Right. He's an ex-soldier from New Zealand and very much in charge. But it's the hide for the day stewards who are the ones who frequently confront the saboteurs in the fields. Both their tempers and their zeal can worry the police. Here officers had to push the stewards back and warn them. Oh, let's go. Oh, and the rest of you, you're not telling us how to do our job. You're right. Young or old, the stewards will push saboteurs off the land. Though often they do put up with astonishing provocation. Whoa, 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 whoa. 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 We don't really have that much control over the other stewards. They are working here for the local landowner as well, um, but we haven't really got the same control over them as, a, as we have over our own men. Normally, we, we don't have another security group with us. We, we do the work ourselves to try to keep the peace and uh, keep the violence out of the situation. For the Surrey hunt, that meant corralling them behind the protective gates of a disused factory. Dunn organises security for 14 hunts. Business is booming as long as there's trouble. Now, apparently there's been uh, a very nasty incident about two miles away uh, and people have been injured. Uh, there are some very nasty people around. I've had fights three miles away from you, so it's gone far, far beyond your... Well, region. this is what we've always yeah. said, aren't we, that these people yeah. are just looking for violence and yeah. trouble. So whilst you were quite happily hunting down here, I've got large-scale fighting going on the other side. So okay. you're, you're so requesting I, that we stop? I'm requesting that it's over now today. We can tell your land agents it's all over, and I can tell our saboteurs so it's all over. So we're being actually told to stop hunting I'm then. requesting you to stop, yes. Right. Okay. I think a collective decision is that we'll take the police's advice. And we have to. So from a, from a law and order point of view, this area has become a no-go area. Well, because we, no can, go. we no. can no longer carry out a lawful activity in this area. Hunt sabotage has been a major problem in the south, but most of Britain's 200 hunts are peaceful. We went to the capital of fox hunting to see what it was like away from the human violence. The beaver hunt in Leicestershire is one of the biggest in the country. They hunt four days a week. We're going to see roughly over 100 riders at this oh, meet, and that's, and that's not the biggest meet they had. Nationally, it's claimed a quarter of a million people go fox hunting. 16,000 jobs depend on it, so it's vital to the countryside. Should it be an integral part of the countryside? Is what they're doing inherently cruel? Say the traditions are wonderful, especially this tradition. Yeah, any any chance of a glass? <laughs> Do you think you ought to give them a glass or not? If they're on our side. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been riding for? I've been I learned to ride side saddle when I was 12 years old. 12? Jumping the hurdle of negative public opinion is the task confronting the fox hunters. Like the hounds, the anti lobby smells blood. They believe the sport will be banned by the turn of the century. Is that the huntsman there? This is the huntsman here. Hunting is expensive, up to £1,500 a year to join. 
Some riders here keep two horses, though some have difficulty staying on one. And Charlie the fox isn't that easy to outwit. What do you enjoy about it? Uh, riding nice horses and jumping nice fences on nice land. Is getting the fox secondary? I wouldn't say, when you say getting the fox... Killing it? Well, I would think personally, probably yes. The beaver's paid professional huntsman would be out of a job, and so would the pack of hounds he runs if hunting was banned. Some people think that when a hound gets a fox, or when the hounds get the fox, they tear it to pieces. Is that what happens? Well, he's dead. He's dead. When they get old, he's dead. How quickly? Yeah, he, he, either gets, he either gets away or he's dead. Yes. But how quickly do they kill? Very quickly. Very quickly. Within seconds. But it's not always a quick kill. An anti-hunting spy infiltrated the corn hunt and caught them digging out a fox which had run to earth. These scenes shocked even the hunting world. First they shot it and then they tossed the body to the hounds. The spy, Mike Huskisson, has also conducted an investigation on behalf of the League Against Cruel Sports into an alleged tax fiddle being operated by many of the hunts. It's a secret trade in the hides of dead farm animals, and it's claimed the income is hidden from the tax man. One example is our old friend, the Chiddingfold Hunt in Sussex. The master, Jeremy Whaley, runs on the side one of the biggest knackers yards in the area. His men skin the animals and he sells the hides, but he admitted he doesn't tell the taxman about it. Well, we spoke to him on the telephone and he told us that um, he doesn't declare his dealings in the skin business to the revenue. We've been told from other hunts that as much as £2,000 a month in cash is taken in by huntsmen dealing in this business. In cash? Yes. Cash in hand? That's it, all cash. The investigation right, found over 60 huntsmen admitted they declared nothing or only part of their income from the trade. I decided to pose as a hide merchant willing to pay a little over the odds. Touting for business, I phoned Mr Whaley. Oh, hello. Is, um, is that the Chiddingfold Leck and Field Accountry Hunt? That's right, yeah. Is that Mr. Whaley? Yes, oh, Mr. Whaley, I wonder if you can help me. Roger arranged a purchase from Mr. Whaley and travelled down to Petworth to collect at the kennels. This is the commercial side of hunting, rarely glimpsed by outsiders, but a vital part of the setup. Roger went in with a secret camera while we monitored the deal outside. We're paying good prices. I mean, we'll, we'll pay 15. 15 a hide. Is yeah. that uh, acceptable to you? Yeah, that, that, that's OK. Yeah, that's fine. Um, fine. Well, shall I pay you... Um... Yeah, yeah, lovely. Yeah, yeah. OK. I'll give you 20s. Is that all right? Yeah, fine. Okay. No problem. Great. OK, okay. lovely. Right. Can we, um, can we just make out a receipt? Yeah. Um, just put the key on the key hunt for this. Right. If we do some... I mean, we're, we're thinking really of trying to get a, a lot of hides now. And if we do some regular business with you, how... What, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to invoice you, or, 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 or do you want to just... Shall we just come down? We'll just come down. Just come yeah, down, pay, yeah, pay yeah, cash? Pay cash, yes. OK, yeah. fine. I've not dealt with hunts before. Is that how it you normally happen? Well, that's right, yes. I mean, we don't... You know, we don't... Um, I mean, you, you VAT register, or what? You're going you're gonna to declare VAT on well, it? Well, well, I mean, if you... Well, uh, we'd rather you didn't, really. Right, OK. You'd rather us not declare it. That's oh, right, yeah, OK, yeah, fine. Yeah. All right. Yes. I mean, you'll find with, with all the hunts, you'll get more hides that way than you will. Well, then, then doing it, <laughs> OK, yeah, then putting yeah. it through the books. That's right, yeah. All right, OK. Yeah. Thanks very much. Okay, nice Mr Whaley Sorry. claimed he didn't benefit personally from the hide income. He said it all went to the hunt, of which he is the master and paid professional huntsman. The question now was, what on earth were we going to do with our bloody skins? All right, Rob, what oh. sort we got? So we might Denise a little stole out of this. Looks like a Mafia hit squad's bit of work, doesn't it? Awful, doesn't it? Well, that was a bit messy, doesn't it? I didn't realise the skin trade was bloody as well as being lucrative. Yes, well, some people believe it's just another form of animal abuse that needs to be fought. And I met one man who's well, been convicted was. of serious yeah. offences in the cause of what he calls animal rights. Ronnie Lee co-founded the Animal Liberation Front. Animals are his life. In 1987, this mild-looking man was convicted of conspiracy to incite arson, and criminal damage. Well, I actually got a 10-year sentence, which meant that I, I, I actually served six years and eight months, which is two-thirds of the sentence. When did you get out? I got out in November last year. 
That's an awfully long time to spend in prison for the sake of animals. Why did you do it? Well, the what's motivated me right from the beginning is, is to fight for animals. Is Well, first of all, the, the terrible suffering that they're put through at uh, the hands of, of human beings. Secondly, the fact that they can't fight for themselves. Ronnie, you got involved in animal activism through hunt saboteurs, didn't you? My story of getting involved in, in the type of direct action that the ALF carries out um, does, in a sense, start with the hunt saboteurs. Um, because I, I got involved in hunt saboteurs very early in my, um, I suppose, in, in my campaigning days. Now others are carrying on where Ronnie Lee left off. Roger was told he'd receive a phone call late at night from Charlie, an ALF activist. Hello. Yes, Charlie. Yeah. Where? Okay. I didn't know what had happened, but a special unit at New Scotland Yard is tracking the ALF's actions. My contact and his friends had trashed an East End slaughterhouse and stolen 150 chickens. So for obvious reasons, he was wearing a mask when I met him. Is it Charlie? Yeah. Hello, Roger Beam. We found that um, there was 400 chickens in there. So what we, what we thought was the best thing to do was um, take ch as many chickens out as possible and then go in and, and, and um, do as much damage as possible. How many of you took part in the action? Um, there was eight of us involved altogether. I've been taking actions um, for five years, from small scale up to bigger scale actions. And how long will you continue? So I'll just um, continue until I get caught or sent to prison or animal abuse is stopped. What's the evidence that you've actually done what you've said you've done at the slaughterhouse, Charlie? We actually took a video of us inside, which I've got with me now. Can you pass it to us? I can do, yeah. Thank you very much. The ALF video showed oil and creosote being tipped all over the place to make the premises a health hazard. The slaughterhouse told us they'd been hit several times before. As for the chickens, they've now become free range. The ALF regards hunt sabotage as another episode in their battle. But most saboteurs are not ALF activists though the pro-hunting lobby calls them terrorists and blames the escalating violence on them. I don't hunt stabbing because it is a form of direct action which is, which is legal and um, I can actually get out in them into the field, the killing fields, and actually see the actions I take saving foxes' lives and that is why we're out there. So there's a direct connection between sabbing and taking more direct action? Um, well, one's, one's legal, one's illegal. It's the same people some of the time doing the same things, just like you? Yes. Have some hunts stopped hunting because of the saboteurs? No, never. Never. The saboteur's idea is to try to put a hunt out of business, permanently, full stop. And they haven't succeeded in that, and they're not going to either, because we will not be beaten by sabotage. The hunt rides on for now, but only 12 votes in Parliament stopped fox hunting being banned last year. The hunters insist chasing an artificial scent, for example, rather than a live fox, just wouldn't be the same. That's Charlie, look. So for now, Charlie the fox better keep watching his back. Well, I'm glad the fox got away. Yes, well, it was with a little bit of help from us. Hello, Charlie. Yeah. Got away with it that time, didn't you? Yeah, live to fight another day. Yeah. chocolate buttons, don't they? Follow Beam and De Silva next week when they're on the trail of London's crack dealers, the men selling misery on our streets. And if you think there's something which needs investigating, put Beam and De Silva on the case by writing to Beam and De Silva. Post Office Box 101, London, WC2N, 4AW. Night, now disguises. a.m. outside Manchester's Piccadilly station. 
animal rights protesters are meeting for a day out in the country. They're the hunt saboteurs, but unknown to them, an undercover disguises reporter has joined their group. The hunt followers gather to watch the pursuit of a fox. Confrontation is looming, some of it violent. Do they believe their sport can survive? Among them is another disguises reporter. I'm not on your fucking hand, you loser. You're the gay. You're the gay. You're the gay. Come on, get it off this land. Reasonable force. Yeah. Oh. Reasonable force. Is that what's reasonable force, is it? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. someone on the floor and Angry him. scenes like these are becoming common at fox hunts throughout Britain's countryside. To the hunters, their sport represents a way of life that's frequently misunderstood by badly informed outsiders. But to the saboteurs, hunting is an expression of man's worst treatment of animals and mustn't be allowed to continue. They think direct action is the answer. In this battle of the countryside, it's not just a fox's life at stake. Tonight, Kate Stone and Neil Henderson reveal both sides of a war that's already claimed one human life. Our two disguises investigators will run with a fox and ride with the hounds. After a series of telephone calls and animal rights meetings, I'm about to take my first lesson in hunt sabotage. Okay. Saboteurs are always wary of spies, whether from the police or the hunt. I'm all the more tense in case I get spotted. I may look like an urban gorilla, but this is regulation dress for saboteurs, or as they call themselves, sabs. The people I'm going to join aren't rent -a mob Some of them are students, but there are nurses, a computer expert, and an electronics engineer. What unites these people is a profound hatred of hunting. In an organization that's almost military in its precision, we'll use hired bands and meet with other like-minded activists from all over the country. I don't know where the other van is, but that one's North London, so... Um... Then we'll travel into Cheshire, where several hunts are based. It's also the place where a hunt saboteur died during a protest nearly two years ago, so it's specially targeted by the campaigners, who want to mark the second anniversary of the tragedy. 18-year-old saboteur Mike Hill was killed in an accident with a pickup truck driven by huntsman Alan Summersgill. Scum! Scum! Two days later, a demonstration outside his home turned to violence. A Granada television news crew was bundled away by protesters to prevent them filming the attack on the house. Six people were later jailed for their part in the incident. The hunt saboteurs remain embittered, despite the coroner's verdict of accidental death on Mike Hill and the authorities finding that there was no case against Mr. Summersgill. It's early on a Saturday morning and I'm driving into the country to attend a meet of the Cheshire Foxhounds. Hunt followers are suspicious of outsiders. Will they be suspicious of me? I want to know what kind of people spend the best part of their weekends watching and supporting a hunt. If you're not a local, finding the hunt can be difficult. I arrive just as the riders are setting off. A hunt official is videoing the arrival of the saboteurs. They're an unwelcome sight for the hunt and its supporters, but in Cheshire the protesters' presence is now routine. The hounds have barely started their day's work before the saboteurs try to intervene. I am escorting you off. Come on. I am escorting him off. Now this is what's wrong. This, this is what's wrong. Yeah. This is private land, and those people are just walking wherever they want without, without permission. permission. Yeah. Without permission. Those people on horses have permission. They're doing a lawful. Well, it's nothing thing. unlawful, it's is not, it? It's, it's, it's perfectly lawful. They are breaking the law. Yeah. Now, get off. We're off on I'm this. I'm doing... Don't touch me. Well, I'll do one or two things. Oh. Landowners and their agents are allowed to use reasonable force to expel trespassers. But just what is reasonable is a matter of opinion. Get off him, man. You are not using reasonable force. Get your hands off. Off the land. Off. 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 
The hunt is determined to carry on with its sport, but the presence of the fox is almost incidental as the saboteurs keep up the pressure. Get off this land! Get him on the field, they're beating him up there! They're beating him up! They're beating him up! Get off his land! They're beating him up! Two minutes, I'm going to ask you politely to leave the land. You've been asked to leave the land. No, if you don't. I've been beaten and told to have you, really. Pardon? Where's the mark? Where's the mark? No, I haven't. Well, where's your mark? I'm not stupid enough to put my face in the way of anything. Well, don't do it. Yeah, go on, we're all right. You've just assaulted him on a public footpath. Have we? Where's the footpath? You show me where the footpath is, and I'll agree with you or disagree. In fact, it's not a footpath. Come on. When you leave the land. Leave the land. Come on, just don't you touch me. I'd just like to tell you, you that it is an offence. I'd love to have you with It's not people an offence. to stop a huntsman going about his normal duty. Have you got any, have you got any proof of that? Have you got any court cases? It is, it is written I've down. Been hunted, I've been stabbing hunts for ten years. Good for you. I've been blowing hunts for ten years. I've never once been arrested for it. I've done it in front of police officers. probably won't be arrested You are talking out of your arms. The police arrive, but there are too few of them to keep the sides apart and under control. Tempers continue to flare. A senior police officer finds himself taking a crash course in countryside diplomacy. I'm going to let you make your own assessments from what your office so is saying today. Sure. I believe you should be having the same mind. Well, I intend to have this. In fact, I've just been speaking to one of them, as you well know. I've also made it quite clear, and I make no secret about it now. It is, is that the same applies to them. They have a, a, a lawful right to hunt. You have a lawful right to peacefully demonstrate. Neither side have got to go over the top. And the, and the difficulty is, is when that situation begins to arise, what we've got now is an allegation from your side. Yes. We've got an allegation, we've got an allegation from the other side this morning. And what I'd ask you to do is to disperse and by all means demonstrate, but do it peacefully. At the end of the hunt, the followers repeat some bizarre rumours about the saboteurs. Well, would you get out on a Saturday morning and do this if you weren't getting paid for it? You don't want the car to be running around fields, causing a nuisance and disturbing everybody else's way of life for nothing. One chap was speaking to a lad, he was on a horse, and he said, why are you here? What do you do this for? And he said, I don't know, he said, but I can't afford to live on what I get. I'm a student. He said, I get paid for this. 
It's a pay me more than what they're paying me, and I'll come on your side. Well, who do you think pays them? They college or they just you, you've got no absolute evidence of who pays, but it is there. They are being paid. My first day as a hunt follower has shown me how much effect the saboteurs are having. They have created a siege mentality amongst the hunt supporters. Even just by turning up to watch the hunt means that people are suspicious of me. They think that I might be a saboteur, or as they call it, an anti in disguise. I have been photographed, videotaped, been asked for my name and address, and even had my car number taken. The hunt is on the defensive. But they're just making life impossible, aren't they? Well, they say they're going to stop hunting in Cheshire, but um, I think the, really? the, the Cheshire hunters have got to fight them, haven't they? Mm. Are they really saying that? Oh, yes. <laughs> for a packed lunch and 25 quid, I think they give you. No, I think they give you. Because they tell them. 40 pounds. Yes. Oh, Lord, yes. Today's the anniversary of this bloody fool who killed himself on the Beagle trailer. Nothing to do with Alan's mind, you? But, um, I read something about that. Well, two years ago, mm. he was in the Beagles, which are uh, based out of uh, Kenneth and the other side, Chester. He was trying to... He, he got in his van and you know, with his trailer and hounds behind, and he tried to pull the pin on the trailer. And he, he got... Uh, the wheels of the trailer and it killed him, you see. He died in hospital, so of course they've got him as a martyr. Mike Hill's death gives the Sabs an extra reason to continue their efforts in Cheshire. This year they're marking the second anniversary of the tragedy with an all-out protest. It'll bring Sabs together from across the country to try to stop the Cheshire foxhounds from hunting. Saboteurs don't get paid. In fact, they're expected to chip in for petrol. But we do get free legal advice from a more experienced Sab. advertised time and place for the hunt's meet, but there's no sign of them. I decide to ask around. We started at 10 o'clock, so we were with uh, uh, Proverbs. And in trouble. Uh, okay. What police have you ever seen from the Well, we've been driving around trying to find them, and all we've seen and spoken to is police. police yeah, because they picked up the answers on the... Uh, Bypass, uh, what do you mean, take them up? Uh, on the over the radio, somebody had spotted them. When I do catch up with the hunt, I find that they have hired a team of private security men as stewards. The Sabs are soon on the scene. At the vehicle. I think we're going to go down there. Can we get some down here? The huntsmen decide to try to decoy the protesters into the wrong stretch of woodland. Saboteurs, hunt stewards and police all record the events in case of later legal action. The police have turned out in greater numbers and they're blocking roads and even footpaths to keep the two sides apart. 
that's to make him at the breach of the peace or a breach of the peace may be committed. Why is your reasonable suspicion then that that's why you committed? Because, because you're not answering any of my questions. What are you doing here? Like why would you like there. to go down there? Because I'd like to go and see what's down there. What's in particular? I'd like to go and see the next day. For what reason? To the Sabs, the roadblocks are a breach of their civil liberties. The officers come in for some abuse from my fellow activists. But saboteurs on foot can evade a cordon. Once we're out of the van, we're told to stick together. That's because stewards are more wary when sabs are in a group and there's less chance of arrest. Then into the fields for a long trek across mud, hedges, fences and gates. It's an assault course. Somehow we must connect with the hunt. The sabs tactics are aimed at catching up with the hounds and distracting them from picking up a scent. Huntsmen use horns to control the pack, so the sabs use horns as well. There's a more high-tech method too, using a tape of the hounds in full cry and a megaphone. This device can work at long range. It's hard work because the hunt moves faster than we do. The sabs have CB radios to keep in touch with each other and they try to get a fix on where the hunt is from moment to moment. Eventually we catch them, but we're just a little too slow, possibly because after a cross-country hike of several miles, we're too tired to keep up. There's a mass charge by the Sabs in a last attempt at confrontation. But the hunt moves off down a road and the police seal it after them. This sound breaks the cardinal rule, which is to do everything together and stay in the group. She's later released without charge. The Sabs are tired and angry. I've seen it all now. You're disgusting. You're the pits. Have a nice day. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm getting a taste of the paranoia that surrounds hunting. I'm a new face and I've attracted suspicion. The hunt supporters in this pub decide I'm a sad and humiliatingly I'm made to feel most unwelcome. Please. I'd like to know why. I'm trying to stop it here. Would you please go out? I thought this was a pub. Yes, it's my pub. Thank you. Bye. Out. 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 Is it a private function going on or is this a public house? Out. You're against the hunt, aren't you? No, no we're not. all following the hunt. <laughs> you're following the hunt? Yes. yes. I we haven't seen anything all day. She's not. She's following the hunt. Out through the door, please. In no way at all. I've been following the hunt for the last three weeks. Please go. There's a door. Are you empty? Oh, yeah, no, not at all. Everybody is so suspicious of people they don't know. Why? Please go. Please go. Please go. Well, no, this really angers me. This angers me. Please go. I understand how we feel. Well, you don't know. I'm quite happy to pay my subscription to be a hunt follower. I mean, why? Please, please leave. Is there any feathers down? I don't want it. I know. My time as a hunt follower is over, but I'll be back. After the day's action, the Sabs meet to discuss the events, swap stories, and play football. Please, Mr. Sabas, always block us off the road and we'll just fucking drive straight through. Then I knocked him over. Is that killing her? I don't think so. I really didn't. I didn't have any idea. People weren't with them for so long. There's no way of knowing. I mean, they got away for a couple of hours, didn't they? most of the day really. I've met the hunt supporters, but what about the huntsmen themselves? To see things from their point of view, I've abandoned my undercover role to ride with them. 
People have traveled from the other side of the country to attend this meet. At least part of the attraction is social. There's a strong camaraderie amongst the riders. Hunting is dangerous and not just for the fox. Riders test both their horses and their nerve. One of the attractions of hunting is its unpredictability, even when there are no antis about. I've had a few riding lessons, but a strong drink is very welcome before setting out. Hunters say their sport isn't just for the landed classes, but these specially bred horses can cost thousands of pounds to buy. I've heard mine for the day for 75 pounds. Not everybody is here just to kill a fox. Many enjoy an exhilarating gallop across country. It's certainly exciting, but also terrifying. What the hunting set call popping a few fences is often a leap into the unknown. It's a test of courage and skill, and I'm grateful not to fall off. A fox is flushed from cover. The hounds are onto its scent, but today it's lucky. Hunters are a tough bunch, undeterred by a sudden spell of bad weather. It's not surprising that they've held the saboteurs off for so long. Finishes without a kill and not a saboteur in sight. I'm sabbing again, this time in North Staffordshire, and there's more trouble. Not here. You're not allowed on this land. These two groups simply can't exist in the same space without someone losing their head. The potential for violence is always there. Take By force of numbers, the Sabs get their way. Only constant and heavy policing can prevent the sides from trying to settle scores. It's expensive. When the public tires of paying for it, either hunting or hunt sabotage will be banned. One of the more experienced Sabs told me that the heavy policing and the hunt's need to employ stewards means the protesters are winning. The strategy is to create so many public order problems that hunting is driven underground. The Sabs believe victory is in sight. The hunters believe their sport is being misunderstood by outsiders with no experience of the countryside. So they will continue to defend their traditions because to admit defeat spells the end of their way of life. Thank <laughs> you. 